What's up, Outriders? Amber here, back with another build guide for Devastator. This is a max level Devastator playing on World Tier 15. You can solo anything in the main quest, side quest, monster hunts. This is a bounty. You can also clear some early expeditions. I've cleared up to challenge tier 5 with this build. But to get higher, you'll need legendaries. So that's the special thing about this build. It's a budget build. No legendaries required. I'm using all tier 1 and tier 2 mods for weapons and armor. So let's take a closer look. For the weapon, I'm using an LMG, suppressing variety. I love the large clip size. It's got armor piercing attribute and the mods, tier two mods are Claymore and Clip Roller. And those are the mods I have on all my weapons, armor piercing, Claymore and Clip Roller. I only use the secondary weapon or the sidearm if my primary weapon <laughs> runs out of ammo. Claymore I love for the large anomaly blade and clip roller will reload the LMG because it has a pretty slow reload rate. So that's super useful. And then on the head, I have blood shock and emergency stance. Emergency stance will proc golem when I get into trouble. So even though golem is not one of the skills I have equipped, I will get it if I am too low on health. On the chest, I have Extra Quake, which gives me a second Earthquake, and Human Comet to increase the damage of Gravity Leap, which is important since we're going to use that to regenerate our health with Life Absorption. And then on the pants, I've got Armor Boost to boost my armor via the Earthquake skill, and Phantom Dash, which let, lets me dash and, since I'm using Clip Roller, reload my weapon at the same time. So Clip Roller and Phantom Dash work really well together. On the gloves, I have another armor mod for Boulder Dash and What Goes Around, which is kind of like Reflect Bullets. But you could replace this with another mod if you have another tier two mod that you prefer. But I find this works well against human enemies. And then finally on the footgear, Primal Rage to cut the boulder dash cooldown in half, and then life absorb, so that gravity leap will heal me. So the armor stat on here is misleading because I'm gonna be getting a ton of extra armor whenever I use boulder dash or earthquake. So the three skills I'm using, earthquake, which is an awesome interrupt, and also deals damages to enemies in front of me. So the key to this build is to keep the enemies in front of you and don't let them get behind you because then Earthquake will not be effective. And Boulder Dash also works on enemies in front of you as you dash ahead. So you'll notice in the gameplay at the beginning, I often had my back to a wall of some kind. Boulder Dash charges forward, and this is a kinetic skill. So when I use this, it's going to proc my kinetic bonus, which we'll see on the skill tree. So I'm basically spamming Boulder Dash. Whenever it's off cooldown, every eight or nine seconds, I'm using it to get the damage, the interrupt, and also to proc my firepower bonus. And finally, Gravity Leap, another kinetic skill, which is gonna trigger the firepower bonus. And it's also gonna heal me since I've got the Life Absorb mod. So if I kill an enemy, I'll not only get the close range bonus for that enemy, but also the gravity leap bonus as well. And finally, we're looking at the skill tree. As you can see, I'm using the top tree, the vanquisher, all the way to alter charge, which is going to give me a huge 70% firepower bonus when boulder dash or gravity leap ends. So increase my weapon damage by 70% for 10 seconds. And since I have Boulder Dash 50% cooldown reduction, I pretty much have 100% uptime on this 70% weapon damage by spamming Boulder Dash and Gravity Leap. I've also got the Confrontation to reduce the damage of incoming attacks. And the same for Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter increases my damage against elites and reduces the damage they deal to me. 
And I picked Assault Master because I really like the LMG and also the ARs in this game. But if you prefer shotguns, you could take the Shot Master, Shotgun Master node there instead. And I'll just run through the minor nodes that I picked. The key ones here are the armor piercings. You want to take all three armor piercing, and you also want to have armor piercing on your weapon because that'll help you deal with elites much more effectively. You'll notice I did not take any of the cooldown reduction nodes because I have cooldown reduction on my armor. If you have at least two, I actually have three cooldown reduction attributes on your armor, then you won't need to take the cooldown reduction here and you'll still have you know, constant uptime on your boulder dash. And then finally I had four nodes left over and I use them in the middle tree to get two max health increases. So I have 20% additional max health, tank for 20% more armor, and then one anomaly in veins node. I highly recommend at least one anomaly in veins to get health regeneration, which will help you against bosses if there's no low level enemies around and you're just fighting the boss, you'll wanna have some health regeneration. For example, this is the monster hunt battle against the Cold Claw boss. I've already killed all of the adds and I'm just fighting the boss, but I'm getting health regeneration from Anomaly in Veins. And I'm using Boulder Dash even though I'm not going to hit anything to get the firepower bonus. Earthquake, oh and there I was, I waited till the bird landed and then I can use Gravity Leap against it. And Earthquake does work on enemies in the air. So you'll see in a bit, my earthquake is going to apply bleed to the bird. But definitely this build is not super strong against flying enemies, but it still works. This is Amber. Subscribe to my channel for more guides and gameplay for Outriders.